It's time for breaking bread with Papa. Hey, don't you know? Hey, it's also a show. Hey, there's, I, I describe it. There's always these moments where I call it kind of the Wizard of Oz moment, where you look yeah. behind the curtain, you're like, oh. <laughs> This is what? This is it? And this yeah. is not a criticism of Just for Laughs, but I remember the first time I got I went to Just for Laughs. Yeah. I uh cuz I ended up doing Letterman and I didn't do new faces, I don't think, mm-hmm. until I did it I you know, I ended Came up in after, yeah. Yeah. And so, but it was something I always wanted to go to yeah. Montreal and I got to Montreal and I'm like, oh, this is just yeah. It's just a bunch of comedians. Like I imagine there was like <laughs> sign here and get you a bag of money and then you <laughs> Yeah. There's a conveyor belt. Tom Cruise is in that room. And um there are so many yeah. of these moments. Like mm-hmm. I remember when I did Letterman and my brother flew in and I had a friend who uh had put me in a commercial and I was like, This is great and it was a big night for me and everything. But yeah. like there was part of me that was like well, what do I do now? Because that was mm-hmm. my only goal. Right, right. Was to do Letterman. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. So crazy. <laughs> I know. And then you're like, oh, all right. Right. I, I heard something. I'm going to butcher the quote, but it was it was uh, something about that wisdom is knowing what not to worry about. Oh, wow. And I really am feeling that now because... When you're younger and running, yeah. equal energy in every part of what you have to do. The writing, the touring, the getting to the thing, the talking to the interviews, yeah. the, the, the. and now you're like, all right, I know I'm going to keep it all quiet until it's time to do the run through for the show and then go out and do the thing. And that's where, and then the editing after the show is going to yeah, be yeah, the yeah, thing yeah. that is going to be really important. You know what I yeah. mean? It's kind of yeah. like when you would watch Michael Jordan, not to compare us to Michael Jordan, but, <laughs> but when you would watch somebody who had experience in the game and you're like, why isn't he running back on defense? And he's like, he's pacing himself. <laughs> yeah. He knows where he's valuable. He knows when he has to hit, he knows yeah. how to spend his energy. And I feel like that's the big difference from now. Like all those moments that you're saying, like that were like, you kind of like punctured the balloon. You also were learning like, oh, that's perspective. It's, yeah. It's not that big and weighty. Yeah. You know? It is just, it's amazing how, I guess I am generally a naive person, but like I look back and I'm like, what was I thinking? <laughs> what was I thinking? <laughs> like what? <laughs> Like I had this opportunity, so I did Letterman. I got a development deal, and then um, uh, the show "Welcome to New York." Right. And um, and the executive producer guy was like, "Hey, they want to take all credit for the concept you came up with," and I was like, "Yeah, that's all right. I don't care." <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> And I was yeah. like, yeah, it's okay. Yeah. I, I just want to be on. I'm just grateful to have a show. <laughs> yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, they're like, they don't want you in the writer's room. And I'm like, well, that's all right. I'll be busy acting. But uh, can I give ideas? They're like, they're definitely open to your ideas. <laughs> they never took a single idea. <laughs> right. And it was just yeah, one of those things. And I know you had different experiences with your show. Yeah, but, but like, similar. It's like it's... But you're like, wow. Like... It's just so strange how, like, people don't realize these comedians, these, these, these people that if you say don't say turd, <laughs> they'll go out there and say turd, <laughs> are also the same people that have been eating so much shit <laughs> that from comedy managers, comedy clubs, and all the comedy club managers, yeah, that. If you were to take away all their toys, they'd be like, okay, that's all right. You know what I mean? Right, yeah. It's a very little, strange thing. They're a little like, different. There's yeah. this rugged individual. Yeah. But then they're like, oh, I don't get paid? That seems to make sense. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's so, like, how is the same person who has the gumption to go on stage yeah. doesn't have the gumption to say, no, no, that was my idea? Well, you think it comes from the vulnerability that we have just in the pureness of what we do. Like, I remember I did the 
like as a comedian, you you're always filled with self doubt. You always if it's confident, you're standing in a room yeah. with eight hundred. There's people. no guarantee it's going to work. There's no guarantee it's going to work, and you pull it off, and it goes great. Yeah, and that you still when you get back to your room, you're like, huh? Yeah. Was it how was it? How do I how, make it better? I came off. I I did the. You've done this. The um, Michael J. Fox. Yeah, uh, foundation thing that he does in New York yeah. every year, and uh, I think we were there at the same time actually. Yeah, yeah. And um, I went up on stage and I did my thing, and it went really well. Yeah. And I came off and I was like, uh, and uh, Katie Couric was on the side because she was hosting or doing something, and she was like, "That was great." And I was like, "Was it?" And she hit me. She like slapped me and goes, you comedians are all the same. Oh, that's so interesting. <laughs> yeah. But there that's is, so interesting. and I think that that, to your point, I think it's not only the abuse of all the managers and stuff. I think it's purely, it's an insane thing that we're doing. It is an insane thing. But also I would say at events like that, which that's an amazing event, is that you're also performing for people that spend two hundred thousand dollars for a table, mm -hmm. and so they're not the you know like it's not like your Tucson audience, right? And it's but, not a comedy club audience. Yeah, where it's some a people don't even like comedy. <laughs> some people are there, and they're you know it's not ideal for stand up. So you're not going to hear the same laughs. Mm -hmm. Like I think that like hearing is the like I did a show. Where was it? I did the Melrose Improv last night. Uh huh. It's just a. It was like a different, because it wasn't full capacity. Right. It's like oh no, you know what it was? Uh -huh. It was I did Kimmel. Uh huh. And you know late night shows. They're usually you can tell you're like well that didn't work but that worked mm -hmm. that didn't work it was all like that didn't work that didn't work that didn't work because <laughs> hearing the sound right but you know the weird thing is like I I also have a theory that all you know com comedians it's like you know Katie Couric who is so nice and all this stuff, yeah um she doesn't understand that every single conversation everyone's had in the entertainment industry because she's a journalist yeah is a lie so <laughs> every time like we're buddies we've been buddies forever but like most people that you meet yeah. and they say i'm a fan in your head you're like probably not <laughs> Do you know what I mean? it doesn't and there's a difference between that being low self-esteem and that just being the experience like I, I remember there was a time when i um i realized because people in the entertainment industry are so responsive mm -hmm. to i really love your stuff like who did i say it to i i do it too uh -huh. and um they're so they're they, they light up like a, a to compliments uh -huh. right that that's just like a necessary thing like i like when i would if i met someone th now i know yeah to say that but before mm. i would be like hey how you doing ben affleck like i wouldn't know Ooh. to be like really loved this and that and and that's not to say that he needs it but i'm just saying He's been getting that for 25 years. Yeah. So if so, that's absent, he would think this guy doesn't think I'm right. <laughs> you know, it's like he's like I directed a movie that won an Academy Award, mother. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So does that make sense? Yeah, it does. It does. We're very sensitive creatures. Yes. So you know, Ben is, even though, and this is the thing. Like, I haven't met anybody who I see it on social media sometimes and I'm like god do they really believe that like when they have like a slow motion camera following them out to the stage and they're like you know getting on the jet and there's like it's just nothing but pure ego and confidence and I think there are a couple of those that are that way but you know from acting and being around yeah. the huge stars and stuff I, most people are still like am I any good yeah. And I think that's okay. I think that's what makes you work harder, that makes you keep searching. Yeah. You know, I think I think people are surprised that there's self-doubt because you yeah. are the guy standing up there in this 
theater and doing this thing, it seems like, well, he's confident. But in your, in your quiet moments, it's like, if you didn't have any doubt, you wouldn't try and write a better joke. Yeah. 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 